So welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Nama KPSC. So in this particular video, we will be discussing about wetland ecosystem. Since this is all part of your aquatic ecosystem, wetland forms a very important part of your aquatic ecosystem and several times directly or indirectly related to wetlands, you have had application based questions and also straightforward facts based questions from this particular topic. Okay. Now, wetlands are basically swampy or marshy land subjected to permanent or temporary flooding by water. According to the Ramsar Convention, which is actually a very important convention regarding your wetlands, these are defined as areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water, whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary, with water that is static or flowing, fresh, brackish or salt, including areas of marine water, the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters. So, simply put, wetlands are areas of intermediate character that is between deep water habitats and terrestrial habitats and therefore it is a transitional zone in nature which we always refer to as an ecotone. Now, wetlands actually forms a distinct ecosystem that is flooded by water permanently or seasonally where the oxygen free process prevails for a considerable period of time in a year. The important factor that distinguishes wetlands from other landforms or water bodies is the characteristic vegetation of aquatic plants that are adapted to a unique hydric soil that is a soil saturated by water resulting in anaerobic conditions. <clears throat> this is known as the hydric soil. Okay. So, however, the most important factor when it comes to wetlands is that it is considered as the most biologically diverse of all ecosystems. Please remember, wetlands are considered to be the most biologically diverse of all ecosystems which serves as a home to a wide range of plants and animals. Okay. Now, according to your Ramsar convention, wetlands can be classified into 42 types. However, for our discussion, we will restrict this classification of wetlands not to 42 types, but we will restrict it to around 5 types. Now, the major classification of wetlands into 5 types are respectively marine wetlands. Now, marine wetlands are nothing but coastal wetlands which includes your coastal lagoons, your rocky shores and coral reefs. Second is estuarine wetlands. These include deltas, tidal marshes and mangrove swamps. These are nothing but deltas and which are found along the river mouth. Third is lacustrine wetlands. Now lacustrine wetlands are associated, are associated with lakes. So, wherever you have large lakes, the wetlands which are found along the, uh, these uh, lake bodies, uh, sorry, water bodies are known as lacustrine wetlands. Fourth type is a riverine wetland. Now, a riverine wetland are found along rivers and streams. See, if the wetland is found along the mouth of the river, then it is referred to as estuarine wetlands. Okay. However, if the wetland is found along the natural flow or the path of the river, then it is known as riverine wetlands. And finally, we also have palestrine wetlands. These are nothing but marshes, swamps or bogs. Uh, however, in addition to this, as of now, we can also have man-made wetlands, which today are also very important. We can also have man-made wetlands. 
Now, apart from these five classification of major classification of wetlands, you can also consider the classification of wetlands into inland and coastal. Uh, I have also mentioned the various different uh, types of wetlands under these. You can just pause the video over here and also make a note of these different wetlands. Okay. Next, the characteristics of wetlands. Now, when it comes to wetlands, it does not matter which type of wetland it is. In the previous slide, we actually saw different types of wetlands. Okay, But it does not matter which type of wetland it is. Any wetland that you take, it will have these three common characteristic features. All wetlands will have these three common characteristic features. So the first feature is waterlogged. So any wetland that you take, it will be waterlogged temporarily or permanently and it may be by fresh water or saline water it does not matter but it is always waterlogged the second characteristic feature is hydric soil what do you mean by hydric soil this is nothing but soil which is saturated with water and therefore known as hydric soil now here you have anaerobic condition which exists in this type particular type of soil please remember you have anaerobic condition which exists because the spaces between the soil is actually occupied by water instead of oxygen also the hydric soil is actually dark in color it is dark brown or black in color due to the presence of a lot of organic matter it is dark in color due to the presence of organic matter and may also have a rotten egg smell due to the presence of sulfur it can have a rotten egg smell due to the presence of sulfur in the soil finally the plants which are found along wetlands are known as hydrophytes or sometimes even referred to as macrophytes these are nothing but aquatic plants. So hydrophytes or macrophytes are aquatic plants which are adapted to grow in or on water. These are known as hydrophytes or macrophytes. For example, your lotus. So over here, I have actually given uh, an image over here. So you can just go through this. You can just pause the video over here. And you can just go through these points. There are, these are certain adaptations which are actually found in aquatic plants. For example, your lotus. So you can just, because sometimes you may have questions based on the adaptations of plants to wetlands. Okay. Next, we will briefly discuss the functions of an ecosystem. See, we have already discussed that wetlands harbor tremendous biodiversity of plants and animals and are also known as kidneys of the world because they clean up water as a natural function. In cities, water actually flows out as sewage and this water is treated in sewage treatment plants. Please remember this, it is known as kidneys of the world. Okay, so say for example you have sewage water from cities. These, uh, the sewage water is treated in sewage treatment plants. However, your STPs, that is your sewage treatment plants, actually fail to remove nitrates and phosphates present in water and even heavy metals sometimes present in water. Such waters, if pumped into wetlands, these nutrients and heavy metals can be removed by water, can be removed by water hyacinths and weeds which are present in wetlands. Therefore, these wetlands act as a natural filtering system. It acts as a natural filtering system, thereby purifying water. So, this, therefore, it is known as kidneys of the world and it is a very, very important function of an ecosystem. However, the only problem is that if you are pumping in nutrients, it can also lead to eutrophication and we will have to take care of eutrophication. Apart from that, there can be several other functions of a, of a wetland. You can have nutrient cycling, flood mitigation, maintenance of stream flow, groundwater recharging, control runoff in urban areas, buffer shoreline against erosion, 
stabilization of local climate it can it can provide for fishing a fishing zone and also a genetic it will also act as a genetic reservoir it will also act as a genetic reservoir for various species of plants especially rice because rice is a type which is actually grown in floodlands or wetlands since it is a wetland crop it actually helps in preserving certain genetic species apart from that we can also get peat from wetlands okay uh, even though these wetlands are very important many wetlands are actually under tremendous pressure and are being destroyed so there could be many reasons for this it could be conversion of lands for agriculture it could be overgrazing removal of sand from beds habitat destruction deforestation pollution climate change encroachment industrial effluents eutrophication there can be many reasons which are actually destroying our wetlands and it is very very important for us to take steps in order to prevent these reasons or causes which are responsible for the destruction of wetlands because they are very very essential as they perform certain functions which are important for the survival of certain species and are also very important to maintain this ecological balance as they also form a transition zone from your terrestrial ecosystem to your aquatic ecosystem okay so obviously there are certain steps which can be taken up in order to mitigate the damage that has been done to uh, wetlands and also to prevent further damage so certain measures like afforestation prevention of eutrophication removing or clearing of encroachments environmental awareness all these things go a very long way in mitigating the damage that has been done to our uh wetlands therefore it is very important that we play a crucial role to ensure that the damage is reversed and also prevented in the future now before i move on ahead i would like to make a distinction between lakes and wetlands see the ministry of environment and forests has actually not adopted a very clear distinction between lakes and wetlands in india however we have something known as the national lake conservation program we have something known as the national lake conservation program so according to the national lake conservation program it considers lakes as standing water bodies with three features it in order to be considered as a lake it should be a standing water body having a depth of at least 3 meters it should have a depth of at least 3 meters the water cover should be spread around at least 10 hectares that is the surface area of the lake should be at least around 10 hectares and they should have very little macrophytes or hydrophytes they should have very little macrophytes or hydrophytes wetlands in turn are the exact opposite they are very shallow they can be uh, the depth can be less than 3 meters they are very rich in nutrients they are very rich in nutrients they are uh, they also are abundant in macrophytes they are also abundant in macrophytes so you can just go through some of the differences that are present between a wetland and a lake over here okay now i would also briefly like to go through something known as a national wetland conservation program now this particular program was implemented way back in 1985 to 86 where 115 wetlands were identified which required urgent conservation and management intervention so the aim of this particular program is nothing but conservation of wetlands to prevent their further degradation and ensuring their wise use for the benefit of local communities and overall conservation of biodiversity so there are certain objectives under this program we'll just quickly or briefly go through the objectives so the objectives of this program are to lay down policy guidelines for conservation and management of wetlands in the country the, the next objective is to provide financial assistance for undertaking intensive conservation measures in the identified wetlands 
third is to monitor the third is to monitor implementation of the program and prepare an inventory of indian wetlands the next objective is that the central government will be responsible for the overall coordination the central government will be responsible for the overall coordination of the wetland conservation it will also provide technical and financial assistance to state governments however the management of wetlands will be the responsibility of states since obviously land comes under your state list or the states are responsible for management of land so this covers up your national wetlands conservation program now what i want you to do is there is something known as the ram the ramsar convention under this ramsar convention which are for wetlands there are something known as ramsar sites there are nothing but wetlands which are distributed globally even in india we have wetlands which are considered to be ramsar sites and associated with ramsar sites we have the bonfro record now i want you to please go through this ramsar convention as a homework if you are watching this video please google what is ramsar convention i want you to go through this ramsar convention and also understand what is what is montro record now there are several Mon, uh, ramsar sites in india it is also important that you go through these sites and know where the uh, where these wetlands are actually located apart from the ramsar convention we have also have something known as wetlands international this is also important i also want you to read about wetlands international if time does permit in the end uh, once all these basic concepts and basic uh, topics are covered we can take up some important international conventions where all these things can be discussed okay so here we have a question uh, it says india is a party to the ramsar convention and has declared many areas as ramsar sites consider the following with respect to it okay so we have swamps peatlands fish ponds rice paddies mangroves coral reefs now the thing is that all of them can be considered to be a wetland all of them can be considered to be a wetland so the answer has to be c so thank you for watching if you do have any doubts please do write to us in the comment section thank you